Good morning, good evening, good afternoon everybody. I hope you're all having a lovely day today. I'm not all time o ringed out today. Do you ever have one of those days where you wake up and your hair's actually not half bad and today's one of those days. It's like God did my hair while I was asleep. Well, you might not think so, but you should see it on most days. Anyway, this community is fantastic. I really enjoyed reading the comments yesterday on the video yesterday. A very serious subject, but it's like we're having a conversation, but in delayed response, if you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> it'd be just lovely if we were all on alive and you were all faces and, and we could chat. But unfortunately, that's not how it works at the moment with the internet. Um, continuing from yesterday and also a few other things about, you know, Megan rumours and Harry lawsuits and stuff like that. I've got a few thoughts on those things myself. Um, but continuing on, uh, a few of you had said that you, you don't hold Harry responsible for the atrocities. Of course not. Harry has not, as far as I know, committed any atrocities of that nature. The point is, Harry was made aware of those allegations and atrocities as long ago as last May. And he could, he can, put it this way, he can bring attention to a Bob Marley film. No problem. The whole world's looking now. Um, he can bring attention to his todger. The whole world heard about that. He can bring attention to an awful lot of things. Why can't he bring attention to something other than himself? Um, someone who I think is uh, maybe a, a Harry fan said Harry can't possibly visit any Congolese country because he would be killed and it would be far too dangerous. Um, bullshit. He's been there before. Um, and also, didn't they just visit Jamaica, which is on some foreign office website as don't visit. It's quite dangerous at the moment. I'm not sure that how that's going to help his uh, case against the home office for his security. They're most likely going to say, well, he can pop down to Jamaica. That's not a problem. What's the problem with him coming to the UK? which is a relatively safe country. Well, it is a safe country. Obviously, everywhere, there's always going to be a risk, all the time. But, now, a few of you had said, um, why don't I, we get the ferry from Algeciras, Algeciras to um, Tangier or Casablanca? And are we familiar with the service? Oh my God, that person obviously has no, not, is new to this channel. Um, because we work in Gibraltar on the dolphin boat and where we go and look for the pretty wild dolphins is the Bay of Gibraltar or the Bahia de Algeciras depending on your political stance and one of our jobs is to look out for the Baleera ferries one of which is my least favourite it is called Abemar Dos and I call it Blackmouth and it kicks off a two and a half metre wave. Believe it or not, it's actually worse on a flat day when this monster comes out of the bay and packs it at 22 knots. So yes, we are familiar with the service. However, I'm not quite sure the point that people are making that we could just nip across for 30 odd euros to Tangier. Morocco is 5,000 kilometres away from the Congo. I actually looked up the cost. If we were to get the ferry, to Morocco and then fly from Casablanca to the Congo, I found uh, varying prices uh, from Kinshasa 977 euros each, so you can double that for a start, uh, to Goma 1305 euros each or to Labambashi 1330 euros each. That's just the flights not including any safari holiday that's booked or accommodation. I also looked up, because some of you had said that you have fabulous safaris in Kenya. I'm, I don't doubt it, I bet. But that is 9,337 kilometres away from Morocco. And the flights uh, from Casablanca would be 953 euros each. Marrakesh, 1,093 euros each. Agadir, 1,188 euros each. And that again is before paying for any safaris, no matter how good value they are. Um, and to South Africa, which I would love to do. Uh, if South Africa is 11,200 kilometers away from Morocco. And from Casablanca, oddly enough, the flights are slightly cheaper, 774 euros each. 
from Marrakesh, 847 euros each, or from Tangier, 1,304 euros each. In comparison, I checked the cost to fly to Kenya, the Congo and South Africa from Gatwick. Way cheaper, as I suspected. To South Africa, only 650 euros each. To Kenya, 1,000 euros each. And to the Congo, 600 euros each. But that's still a lot of money. And then having to pay for accommodation, food, entertainment, etc. It's out of our league. It is inaccessible. So I'm not quite sure. I mean, one of you, interestingly enough, said that you had seen Gibraltar from a distance because it wasn't possible to enter Gibraltar in those days from Spain. And you're quite right. What used to happen when the frontier was completely closed, it was for people to enter Spain. There used to be a ferry from Gibraltar to Tangier, and then they would get the ferry from Tangier to Spain because they were allowed entry from Morocco and then returning again. And a lot of people actually used to do that at the weekends just to, to get out for the weekend. An awful lot of hassle if you ask me. So um, the idea, and as far as I know, there are no safaris in uh, Morocco, like looking at rhino or gorilla. Maybe there are. Um, you can go on camel rides and stuff like that. But what I was talking about yesterday is being able to go down to equatorial Africa. Africa, of course, is a continent. I think I need to point that out for one or two sugars. It is not a country. It is a continent which has 54, 55 countries. And I found out something fabulous today. In the country of Uganda, there is a little, well, not a little kingdom, a kingdom, Buganda, with a king and a queen. And it's a constitutional mon monarchical arrangement where they have a democratically elected parliament with a president or prime minister, and then they have the king and the queen, Queen Sylvia. I'll put a link to their... Um, well, I'll put a link to the Wikipedia because that's a good starting point. I know Wikipedia can be a bit Dickopedia, but it's a starting point. Um, but yes, Harry could use his power for good. He could use his spotlight for good. Not take Meghan to wear a ball gown in the jungle. And not dressed as Tarzan or anything naff like that. But he could go down there and he could not only look into those allegations, he could just, you know... Let us all know what's going on down there and the child exploitation. Now, look, I'm, I had a couple of people who sort of said, mind your business, never mind what Africa do, child exploitation, that's okay. I'm sorry, no, that is not okay. It's not okay. And I already said I'm no expert in this subject because nobody ever seems to care or highlight it. The odd person does like uh, that Sky News special report. But not much attention gets to it. Isn't that sad that the clicks generally go for more naff subjects? And also, yes, guys, I really genuinely didn't know about that sort of thing in cobalt mines. I had no idea. I mean, some people had sort of said, wake up um, and smell the coffee or welcome to the real world. Well, I can't be informed on every single subject in the world all the time about absolutely everything. I'm not a walking encyclopedia, as I'm sure you've realised already. Harry's lawsuits. Let's get to this. Now, apparently there's a costs hearing, which I've mentioned many times before, to argue the toss, who's going to pay for what? Because as I've explained before, courts can look at a situation and even though one side has won on the whole, um, and Harry won against the mirror on 15 out of 33 um, articles even though they've won there are many hearings and many applications and then sometimes the court will say well one side called that application that was totally bloody unnecessary you guys can pay for that yourself etc etc now it's very sketchy the information that's coming out at the moment the only sort of firm thing I've deduced is that David Sherborne Harry's lawyer and representing other plaintiffs has said that he wants costs of 2.3 million or something like that. I can't remember if it's dollars or pounds. But the wording way, the way he says it, to me sounds like he's arguing to get those costs. Doesn't necessarily mean that those costs have been awarded, right? Uh, this is different to damages. Cost, legal costs is different to damages. 
Um, and there will be a whole arguing of the toss. And also, the interesting thing I find Sherborne has said is, Harry should register with the court his intention to continue with another 115 articles at the earliest convenience. Now, to me, that wording is like, Harry hasn't actually yet registered with the court that he would like to continue with 115 further stories printed by the Mirror. I think it's the Mirror. He's got so many lawsuits. Um, well, has he registered it or hasn't he? As I say, the information coming out is always very sketchy because whenever it's a Harry and Meghan article, all it is is about Harry, you know, Harry wore this colour suit, Meghan wore this colour dress, and, and you lose a lot of other information and details. So I haven't been able to ascertain exactly where this is going. Is he going to continue for sure? Because when I read the headlines and I further read the articles, because headlines in themselves can be very misleading, I'm not entirely sure that Harry wants to continue throwing a lot of money that he probably doesn't have at this. I'm not sure that he is as keen as David Sherborne. I think David Sherborne's going in a win-win no matter what happens. I'm not sure Harry would relish the thought of being put again in the witness box, being grilled, teased and mocked globally. Um, I'm just not sure Harry wants to continue doing that. I could be completely wrong. Maybe he's well up for it and he just can't wait and he's already registered his whatnot at court. I don't know. And as far as Meghan is concerned, this idea of a spin-off of suits, California suits, to me, I believe we are on yet another cusp whistles into the wind like we were on the cusp of a Dior deal or we we're on the cusp of this or the cusp of that and yes I did see that yet another member of their staff has left it was really interesting reading that article and I forget which one it was so I can't put a link but it was something along the lines of an insider had told the Daily Mail and then they, they then went on to show the guy's actual Instagram post where he says, I'm very happy to say I've got a new job and I'm leaving Archwell Productions. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, anyway, I mean, whether she goes back to movies or not, I don't really care. Um, but I seriously doubt it's going to happen. Seriously doubt it. And I see ever more now the story is uh, that the whole thing was to kiss butt at Paramount, which I don't think has worked out. As a lot of you know, they were hardly treated to as royalty, were they? Um, and, I mean, it's pipe dreams. It's never going to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen. And if there is a suit spin-off, um, Harry will have to pay for it, won't he? And it can be made in their backyard. Their very large backyard. Oh. <laughs> I actually want her to do it. I really want her to do it. Because I think it will be gold. Pure gold. And as a lot of you have said, Netflix may well have some stuff they left out. Um, their camera crew were there. You know, it's, it was Harry and Meghan's production, but they're Netflix people. Maybe there's some hot micing. Anyone knows what a hot mic is? It's when you don't know your microphone's still on and you say something rude about somebody else and they hear it, you know, or you say something really bad. Who knows? But I do notice that the wording is, are Harry and Meghan going to dump Netflix and move to another streamer? Oh, interesting choice of words. Are Harry and Meghan going to dump Netflix? Well, wouldn't you? If you were invited into the British royal family, wouldn't you stick your middle finger up and tell them to get lost? If you were offered a multi-hundred million dollar deal by Netflix streaming giant, wouldn't you give them the middle finger and walk away? I don't think there's any walking away about it any more than finding freedom from the palace. I. I do, I think they've been dumped. 
Oh well, time will tell. Perhaps there'll be a, a huge blockbuster coming out. And actually, I for one would love to see that. I'd just love to see it. In fact, I'll put a link in the description of a movie with Ryan O'Neill and um, Shelley, I think it was Shelley Long and Sharon Stone. I always think of, of that Sharon Stone scene um, where they were trying to recreate Gone with the Wind because Sharon Stone was playing a character very like Megan. Uh, who just wanted to be a star and it was so hammy and so awful and they'd apparently got all the flies in California in a cage and when they said action they let the flies out and then Sharon Stone sort of kicked off halfway through and said I don't like this scene I want more jokes you know and he's like this is the civil war there's no jokes I want to be funny and then the guy in the background goes capture the flies again <laughs> just imagine anyway those are my thoughts and opinions for the day I am going to spend more time looking into the Congo just generally and I have to emphasize again that um, Harry's absolutely nothing to do with uh, um, the mining uh, thing with kids little kids that's, uh, that's not the allegation okay I just happen to find that while looking into the Congo and I'm finding the more I look into uh, African history, the more, more, more complicated it is. I mean, phenomenally complicated. And I have no idea what the solutions are to any problems down there. Um, and I'm sure it is a varied, varied continent. Thank you all very much for listening. And as always, I look forward to chatting to you in the comments below.